last two videos have focused on configuring a BIX-3 for FPV. Now to explain where we are at this point, the plane has already been to the field three or four times where it's been flown purely stock or with just the video gear and finally with the APM and OSD equipment on board. But to date, all flights have been pure LOS. Also, because of windy and gusty conditions, these flights were run with the APM's default PID settings and mostly in the manual mode, with just a few moments of fly-by-wire A mode that proved that the APM at least knows left from right and up from down. This past Wednesday, we finally got a calm day. So the main objective of this trip was to try out APM's auto-tune mode and if it went okay, then engage return to launch and see what that would do. So again, to be clear, what you're watching now is just another LOS flight. But I thought, because of the earlier videos, there might be some interest in seeing some actual flight footage. So, if that's you, then here we go. Now, using the APN's flight log data, here's what's happened so far. We walked out to the field and launched the plane in manual mode. Then, almost immediately after takeoff, OSD Extra indicates the switch over to auto tune. Let's watch the takeoff again, this time paying close attention to the OSD reading shown right over the nose of the plane, and we see it change from manu to auto. Now, back in the Google Earth view, we'll add the auto tune portion of the flight, which in this example shows in yellow. As you see, the plane is flown repeatedly back and forth across the field at about 200 feet above the ground. Here's the FPV perspective of this portion of the flight. At this point on the ground, I'm operating the roll stick from side to side. The wiki says do this holding each extreme for about two seconds at a time, for at least 20 repetitions. At the time, it seemed like forever, but the video clearly shows I'm not holding the position for two seconds. As the auto tune leg of the flight progressed, I could tell that the plane was becoming more responsive to my inputs, especially to the roll commands. However, after about three minutes of doing this, it seemed like the response had plateaued, and as far as I could tell, at no point had it overcorrected. Here's a plot of the ATRP log data for this flight. The data has been filtered to show just roll entries. The blue trace represents my input, the red's the plane response, and green is the p-value being used at the time. While from the ground I never sensed any overshoot, if you look closely you can see in fact it did overshoot from time to time. When it did, the Autotune's algorithm backed off the p-value a bit and then would gradually increase it again until it sensed another overshoot. So for this flight, the roll p went from 0.4 to something close to 0.65. Next, here's that same log data, but this time it's been filtered just to show the pitch entries. In this plot, the plane's pitch never exceeds the command. So, the p-value does nothing but increase over the entire tuning period. I'm no expert on this subject, but at the moment I think the plane needs another tuning session before leaving this phase of the setup. As I said earlier, I also wanted to see how the plane would behave in the return to launch mode. So at this point, I flip the switch to RTL, and here's in Google Earth, you can see the path it took. For me on the ground, it turned in the correct direction, throttled back the engine, and started a descent to what was supposed to be 150 feet. So while it all looked correct, I realized on, on its current trajectory it would take it over trees, roofs, and power lines, which again, if it worked correctly, would be okay, but if it didn't, would be a whole other story. So I aborted and went back to Autotune, which is also fly-by-wire A, and flew a path that kept it in view and back into open space. Once back in the open, I tried RTL a second time. Here's the FPV view of that portion of the flight. Here's how RTL played out as seen on Google Earth. It starts back where it first acquired GPS lock, and then for reasons I can't explain now, 
it veers right away from home and then banks back to the left and then follows a path which takes it right over its home point. After passing through home, it swings around to its right, and if you'll notice, the altitude bubbles up to almost 200 feet. But this may have been me playing with the throttle. Right now, I'm not sure, but I know during this leg of the flight, I was checking to see what effect playing with the controls had over this mode of flying. At this point on the ground, I was more than satisfied with the plane's performance, and now I just wanted to get it down safely and begin a post-flight analysis of the data just captured. So I flipped the flight mode back to manual and spiraled down as quickly as I could. After coming out of the spiral, I flew back up the grade to set up for an approach. But on my first attempt, wind caught the plane and it bubbled up. I tried to bring it down, but decided to go around a second time and try to hug the hill a little closer. This time I was happy with the approach and let it come on in. Here is the cockpit view of how the flight ended. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and here's hoping your next project brings as much satisfaction as this project has for me.